Hi, I'm Frances Peters. We're here at RS Sailing and we're going to show you how quick and easy it is to rig an RS Venture. And while we're doing it, we'll give you a few handy tips to help you when rigging your dinghy as well. So the first step is just to lift the mast up. It's usually worth doing this with the two of you. So I'm going to stand at the end here and put my foot at the end of the mast so that John can walk up it um, and it, it stays nice and stable that way. So I'm going to hop into the boat so that I can help John lift it in. So as John lifts the mast in, he's going to keep his arms as far apart as possible um, and that just keeps it more stable. As soon as we lifted the mast into the boat, we just made sure that it had properly clunked into place. And as soon as we were happy that it was in, I'm going to stand here and make sure it's, it's held forward nicely. John's closed up the mast gate here, just as a safety precaution. And the first thing he did was clip the forestay on to the, to the ring on the foredeck. OK, so once we've made sure that the mast gate is nicely secured in place and we've attached the forestay on to the uh, foredeck, the next thing to do is attach the shrouds. And a really good tip for this is to make sure that you get yourself some fast pins and they just, they just slide straight through the shroud plate um, and attach the shroud firmly into place. So these fast pins aren't specific to our rest boats. You can get them from any tarnery. They're just a really useful thing to have in your toolbox because they certainly save you a bit of time. Okay, so the next thing for us to do is attach the boom onto the mast. There are just two points here with pins going through them and it's just a case of, of attaching them at these points. A good tip here, just as a precaution, is to make sure that when you put the pins through, you put them from the top downwards, so that just in case you lost your split ring for whatever reason, gravity is still keeping it in place. So while I attach the top pin, I'll ask John to lift the end of the boom for me. Right, so the next thing we're going to show you how to do is just to hoist the jib. So you start by making sure that the furler is nicely poked through the spinnaker chute there and then you just attach it to the bottom of the forestay that runs through the jib. Then you just attach the top of the jib directly onto the halyard. It's a good idea to, um, to tape this up, especially if you're using a spinnaker. If you don't tape it, it's just quite easy for the spinnaker to get caught while you're hoisting. Uh, and then you can, you can rip the spinnaker. So once the jib's been hoisted, you'll just pull the loop out from this hole here and attach it onto the hook. And then, as John's doing now, you can just pull more rig tension on. The reason for that is that you're attaching it to a purchase system, which makes it easier to pull. And you do want the, the tension to be, to be quite tight. It will tighten up the shrouds as well, so it holds the whole rig firmly. So the next thing that needs to happen once you've got the jib up is to unattach the forestay as John's just doing now. Um, you don't want that to be flapping around on the foredeck while you're sailing. And you just poke that down through the mast gate. There'll be a little bit of bungee there for you to attach it to, um, just to keep it out of the way while you're sailing. So the next thing is to attach the jib sheets. So you just go directly through the jib cleat here. And John will do the other one. Good idea for when you're sailing to attach the two sheets together, then it's just really easy for whoever's crewing to make sure that they can easily get to the jib sheets. OK, so we've finished rigging the jib up. Say, for example, now we just want to go and get changed or have a cup of coffee or something, and we don't really want the jib to be flapping around while we're doing that. So the great thing about the Venture is that you can just fell the jib up really, really easily. So we'll just show you how to do that now. It's just a simple red string here that you literally just have to pull and it and it'll fill it straight up for you. Um, a good tip though is to keep a little bit of tension on the jib sheets as you do it. If it's a windy day and you let go of the jib sheets, you might just find that the, the jib ends up flapping around a little bit. Nice always to keep control of it. So I've kept tension on the jib sheet and I'm just going to pull the string now and fill it straight up. and just pop it in the cleat once you've done it. So lots of sailing dinghies that are used for training and leisure purposes also have a furling system. So it's just worth you finding out how, where yours is and how it works. So now we're going to show you how to rig the asymmetric spinnaker, which is something which sometimes stumps people just when they're trying to rig the boat nice and quickly. So the first thing to do is to identify which is the tack 
of the spinnaker. Um, it's very helpful that they're nicely labelled up for you, but you can also look for the sail maker's patch here. That's usually at the front of the spinnaker. And of course, making sure that it's the right way up is a, is a, good, is a good tip. So then I'm going to work my way along the bottom of the spinnaker and find the clue, which is the one where the spinnaker sheet's attached to. And then once I've found the clue, I'm going to work my way up one of the tapes, which run along the back edge of the spinnaker, to find the head, which is also nice and helpfully labelled up for you. OK, so once we've done that, there are a couple of patches that are on the inside of the spinnaker, and we just have to locate these and then work the um, halyard through them. So the first patch is right along the bottom edge of the spinnaker. So you just post the halyard through that. Work your way up the spinnaker to find the next one. Are there three? And then there's a third one at the top, which you'll just tie it off at. A good final tip, just to make sure that you don't have it tangled once you've attached the spinnaker at all the points, is just to work again from the very top of it down one of the tapes and all the way to the front to make sure that nothing gets in the way of it. And similarly, I'll just go down the back edge and that's also nice and clear so we know it's rigged right and we're ready to pull it away. I tend to leave the spinnaker sheets as the last things to rig. So you should just make sure that one spinnaker sheet is led inside of the spinnaker halyard here and round the front of the jib while the other one will go straight back to the ratchet block here and there's an arrow on the block to show you which way to thread it. That just shows you which way the ratchet works and it'll be much easier to pull from that direction. Make sure you take it inside of the shroud rather than outside. And like we did with the jib, it's a really good tip just to tie the spinnaker sheets together. It just means that both sheets are easy to get to and it stops either of them from flying through the spinnaker block. So that was just a few really quick tips on rigging up your RS Venture or anything that's similar. I would have to say that my top tip for rigging up and de-rigging any boat, if you're going to have one thing on you, make sure it's a roll of electrical tape. Whenever you've got any shackles, split rings, anything like that, make sure they're all taped up. It just stops any sheets or sails getting caught on them and, and causing any unnecessary damage. Um, and of course, when you're packing up and you drop the mast, ready to tow, make sure that you tape up all of the halyards and all of the shrouds and the forestay and it, and it just keeps it all nicely together, um, nice and tight and stops them clanging against the masts as you're travelling. So if you want to come and see the RS Venture for yourself, we're going to have it at the RYA Suzuki Dinghy Show this year.